Hey everyone, this is your Spiritual Colors and Diamond Painter. And I just want to come to you today and give you my first time flip through of one of the coloring books I just received. It's a gray skill, a Victorian gray skill of coloring book. And I love this book because I love portraits, no matter whether it's diamond painting or coloring. And I'm trying to improve my skills in portraits, especially, especially with the coloring. But I've been watching all kinds of movies when it comes to the Victorian era. I don't care if it's been um, Outlander, if it's been Bridgerton, if it's been um, The Cook of Caramelon. I have been watching these movies and it's really took me back into the British era, Victorian kind of era. So this is going to be my first flip through. And we're going to look at this book by Alina. Alina um, Lazariva. Yeah. So let's take a look at this book. Uh, this is a pretty picture of the lady in the Victorian era with her hat. I really love hats like that with the flowers and the lace. It's something about the way they dress. They were always elegant, uh, really elegant. And they never wore pants in this era. Never. <laughs> so this is pretty. Throwing these drapes will really be beautiful, bringing like really a beautiful color and making this light, this page come to life. It will really be awesome. And she's sitting down. Yeah, that's pretty. And then we have this. They wore a lot of heavy stuff where women had to dress like very heavy dresses with a lot of ruffles and a lot of layers. I remember that part of Bridgerton when that woman, I mean, she was pulling her in that girdle that she had on. It's one thing if you have a gut, but if you ain't got no gut and you trying to pull somebody just to get into a girdle, it was just crazy. And then look at the little kitty. Just doing a background to so this could be really beautiful if you know how to really color it. And this could be done with some pink. They're having tea. I love the English era. They wore a dress for everything. If you were in tea, if you were in a garden, if you were walking in the afternoon, they had a dress for everything. So, yeah, this is pretty. Learning to color like the fruits and those kind of um, cups and her hair. lady out in the garden with her um dog was that a um now dog there's another lady relaxing see pictures like this when you really want to bring them to life you can just kind of imagine the era in all the different colors you would have to add to a picture like this like doing the rug and in grayscale, I really don't, I never went by what's light, what's dark. I just learned as I went along the colors that fit best with grayscale pictures. I never got into the whole, put the dark colors in the dark areas and areas in the light colors in the light areas. I just learned as I went along, as I'm still learning. So, now I love a picture like this. She's out in the garden with the flowers and learning how to do um, better backgrounds. And look at that, that's a lot, that's a lot. Even in the summer, they wore long sleeves because the woman was not, to sh was not supposed to show her body. So having short sleeves, having your shoulders out was a no-no. Now that's really, I love that. I love the picture of the portrait. And when you're doing the face and the eyes. And this, this. this is cute with the fan. I'm trying to do a good background. I haven't started using stencils, but I'm thinking about getting them. They're really cheap. And uh, using them could be good. I've seen people use them to enhance and really get definition to the page. Here's another picture that really looks pretty. She's standing in the garden with the way it's like these. 
I love seeing these on porches. These are the little flower pots. And that's great too. That's just a lot. All those layers, just a lot. Then on, think about what they got on the outside. You know, all the stuff that they have underneath it. Just to have it flare out. Oh, goodness. This is cute with the hat and the flowers and the little bow. Lady relaxing, reading, sitting on her couch. That's good. Get us a good background. Background for this part. This is cute. She's sitting under a tree with her cat. Now, this is really cute, too, because there's a man standing. In this era, when they took um, pictures, a lot of times you would never see the woman standing behind the man. The man would always stand behind a woman. As time went on, you seen the pictures change up where there was times where the month, the woman would stand behind the man. So with time, they changed up the way they took pictures and made the portraits look, but it was always kind of like in respect of the woman. Um, they had high regards of even how when you walk the streets, the man was supposed to stand on a certain side of the woman and she was never found walking the streets at night alone or without a man by her side. Um, excuse me if my voice sounded a little hoarse. It's my allergies. <laughs> but yeah, these were the British Victorian era. I love this. Love this. Love this. It's cute. Like just two little pieces. It's like she could be a maid or something. Like she could have been a maid. And I love that these have mills in them. I mean... Yo, I love my sisters and my females, but I love when I see coloring books that do have more milk images because you don't find it a lot. But I do like to have a lot more milk images in the books. Yes, most definitely. This is cute. Like she might be going to some kind of party or maybe a wedding. The flowers in her hands. This is cute with the bow flush. And she could be going to a wedding. Definitely a wedding. Doing her hair. Giving definition to her hair. Learn how to do hair. I'm trying to enhance my techniques and all that. Here are some bonus pages. From Alina Lazar Riva's other coloring books. Oh, this is really pretty. Hold on. Did my brother got wings up here? He got, look, he got bat wings. Okay, this is really Halloween-ish. Those are wings. Yeah. So he's a vampire. Oh my goodness. I like the vampires without wings. The ones you don't even know. <laughs> like. Oh my god. A vampire. I got his wings and horns. Oh my goodness. Amazing coloring look. And this is pretty romantic. Forever love coloring book. They're like something you could paint. Do some watercolors in here. That's cute. And I love the dragon. I like dragons. I like dragons. I love this fantasy world. That's cute. I didn't get into the Game of Thrones. Everybody I know loves the Game of Thrones. I love the Lord of the Rings stuff. And, um, I know a whole lot of people that love Game of Thrones, but I never got into the Game of Thrones. I don't know what. I'm a unicorn. I'm not into unicorns, but I do love horses. And those ruffles. That was just a lot they have to wear. How you gonna do all that in, in a ride a horse? <laughs> now this is. Now, this is definitely another era. This got to be like 20s, 30s or something. Fashion coloring look. That's great. With the corset. Christmas surprise. Graceville. This is cute. Christmassy. I like Christmas coloring books, but I don't like all the Santa Clausy, Elvish stuff. You know, it's kind of, to me, it just 
it's not that I would think of Santa Claus. I just think it's more childish to me. So when I think of um, Christmas, I like winter scenes, out in the sleigh rides, um, in horse, you know, doing the, the buggies, the horse and the buggy, a decorated table, maybe you know, a decorated fireplace. So I'm not really into the Santa Claus like stuff. Toys. This is this is why I had one of those. My horse was big, and I had a big horse. I have a picture of myself on my riding horse, my toys. Yes, I had a big riding horse. Sorry. Yes, this is pretty. See, I like this scene. This is cute. Just sitting there. That's cute. That's a cute little Christmas scene. Christmas surprise. And then this is gorgeous. This reminds me of Diamond's Art Club's. Um, one of Diamond Art Club's pictures. They had one of their canvases. And it was a partial. I think Rachel Ray did it. Um, it was really big, so I didn't definitely don't have it. <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty. A hundred line artwork. This is cute, kissing in the rain. Enchanted forest line art. And this is nice, it's like romance, enchanted forest. So if I pick the same leaves and trees, this is pretty. Second set of pages begins here. And then there's a second page, just like the first pages. And what I like about that is that if you mess up on your first page in grayscale, they give you a second page you can do. So maybe you didn't like the way the first page looked and say, okay, let me try that again. And they give you a second page. So you can start a little flip through going to the back. pictures that we just went through. And see, when you do pictures like this and the portraits, and you want to get the face right. And I have um, pencils that are definitely for just skin tone alone. But when you're practicing the art of doing portraits and really giving definition to the eyes and enhancing the, um, the brow and the chin, it's just like makeup. You know, learning how to get the, the facial um, color right, whether it's women of color, whether it's Caucasian, I don't care if it's Chinese, it's just the skin tone and getting the colors right. Sometimes you have to use more than one color to make the portrait um, look the way you want it to look. And that's practice, even just de giving definition to the lips and the nose. I've seen people do portraits and do some really beautiful, beautiful work. So I'll be looking for as many YouTube tutorials and videos that I can find to really help um, me do my portraits better because I do love doing portraits. I just want to get better with the skin tones and giving more definition to the face, yeah. even in the hair and stuff like that. Like when you're doing hair. Just making it look nice. A lot of these are just the same pictures. And I just want to give you guys a brief um, flip through of my new book, A Portrait by Elena as a reader. I thought it was cool because I love the Victorian era. Yes. Definitely, definitely a beautiful book that I will be practicing in. So, what are you guys practicing as colorists? Are you practicing, especially if you do portraits, are you trying to upgrade your skills in coloring, such as um, making, you know, the eyes look better, or are you trying to do more paint work or add more background details? Or are you trying to um, do more um, pastel, use more pastel pencils? What are you trying to do when you're trying to upgrade your techniques and your coloring skills? Um, that's what I wanted to know for all you colorists. 
because everybody has something that they like, but some people have something more that they tune into when they want to improve your skills, improve what you're doing, trying to, you know, um, make your pictures look better because I've seen the most um, amazing colors and I'm every day enhancing my coloring skills. So what do you guys, what are you guys trying to enhance in your techniques as a colorist? And I hope you enjoyed my book and for grayscale. Let me see what it's, see all those pages. Yeah. Sometimes my camera be a little off. But thank you so much for tuning in. This is your spiritual colorist and dining painter. Hope you're having a beautiful fall day. And I'll be coming back to you again soon. Probably with my diamond painting that I said I was going to do an unboxing for. So I'll try to do um, videos probably like twice a week. Mostly during the weekday, probably like a Friday, Saturday. Okay. Thank you so much. Do subscribe or like if you like my content. And I'll come back to you guys soon. Have a blessed day.